something a little bit different on today's vlog. This is more of an exercise in, I don't want to say planning for the future, but putting it out there into the universe, how I want my future to turn out. It's based on an episode of the Tim Ferriss podcast, which if you don't listen to, you really should listen to. Specifically, episode number 214, where he interviewed Debbie Millman. I've never heard of De Debbie Millman, but... After listening to two hours of her talking to Tim Ferriss, she came up with, the, which she didn't come up with, it's something I've heard about before, but I think just the timing of it, listening to it over this weekend, with everything that's going on in my life at the moment, it just seemed like the right time to take part in a little bit of a thought experiment slash affirmation type thing. So what she basically said was, back before she became successful, um, she wrote down in as much detail as she could where she saw her life being 10 years into the future. It wasn't just a case of, in 10 years time, I'm gonna be rich and famous. She described where she'd be living, what she'd be doing, who she'd be living with. You know, as much detail as she could possibly come up with, she wrote it all down. And then, as these stories always go, because you only hear about the successful ones, obviously it all came true. And then she started doing bits of teachy lecturing type stuff, did it with her students and she started hearing back from students now who their thing has come true as well. Now, for me, I've written down quite a long description of where I see my life in 10 years. I'm not gonna sit and read the whole thing out to you. I planned to, I read it to Anna and watched her eyes glaze over um, because it was long. I went into a lot of detail. What I am gonna do is summarize and pick out the key bits, the interesting bits, the bits that I do want to put out there into the universe. I don't want to do it as a blog post because quite apart from anything else, I don't have a blog at the moment. I think all the websites I've ever had before have long since lapsed, apart from the lelujo.fm one I use now, and that's not really the place for a post like this. So I thought, why not do it in vlog form? Vlogging and video making in general is massively tied into where I see myself in 10 years time anyway. So this seemed like the ideal forum to do it in. So here goes, 10 years in the future. So where are we now? We're currently February 2017. So 10 years in the future, if I can do maths, is February 2027, which will make me 44 years old at that point. Um, if I, <laughs> and there'll be no kidding myself anymore at that point, I will be more than halfway through my life based on my family history um, of illnesses and whatnot and the health problems that I've talked to you about before and the, all the other nonsense as well. There's no way I'm living to 88 years old. So 10 years time, I'm gonna have passed the halfway point. You could argue I'm around about there now, age 34. If I make it anywhere near 70, that's probably doing quite well. Um, but lifestyle changes at this point could extend that. But in 10 years time, I'm over the halfway point. I'm in the home stretch. Um, Anna's going to be 41, so she's going to be an old lady. <laughs> she didn't like that when I said that to her when I did it with her either. Um, and the kids, um, eldest Sproglet, she's going to be 25. Um, so hopefully well on her way to putting her own life together, starting to live her own dreams. Perhaps doing an exercise like this for herself. Um, middle Sproglet, he'll be 22 years old. And fingers crossed, we'll have got some help from somebody by then. Um, I'd like to think he's in some kind of assisted living situation where he has his own independence, has his own place, um, but has carers on hand to come and help him with the stuff that he needs help with. We don't know what that would be in 10 years time, but what I do know is I don't want that primary carer to be Anna because that's been what she's done for the last 13 years now. I don't want her to spend her entire adult life as a full-time 24-7 carer. She deserves the opportunity to go and live her own life at some point, and I think once he's an adult in his own right, then that's the time to try and find a solution that allows Anna to go and do her thing. Um, and youngest Robert, she'll be 20, um, so hopefully coming towards the end of university. And bottom line, it will be the first time since I was 19 when eldest Sproglet was born that parental responsibility won't be the forefront the number one thing that I have to consider in every decision I make because they're all going to have left home me and Anna are going to be free for the first time ever um, 
I'm going to be free for the first time in, what, 25 years. Uh, that's how old eldest Sproglet will be. That's going to be massive. That's going to be crazy. So not only are we looking 10 years into the future trying to plan how my life is going to be, but it's also kind of going to be the start of part three of the life um, or part four. I can't remember where, the, where I did the parts a few weeks ago and I did that video about chunking my life into parts, but it's going to be the bit where we go and do our own thing on our own. So where are we going to be? I want to be in London. I'm not entirely sure what part of London I want to be in. Um, what I do know is I want to be within a decent cycling distance, and by decent I mean sort of 30 to 40 minutes on a bike, tops, from all the places in London that I like to go to. I don't know if such a place exists, but I'd like to be able to easily cycle to Covent Garden, because that's where Forbidden Planet is. I'd like to be able to easily get to King's Cross, because that's how you get the train back to Peterborough for visiting people who are still here. I want to be able to go to places like Oxford Street and Camden for when Anna wants to go out and about. I would like to be in decent distance of the XL for Comic Con. Um, and I just want to be right in the middle of the city. Um, I genuinely don't care whether we own a house or rent an apartment of some kind. Um, I, property ownership doesn't interest me in the slightest. Um, all I, I would rather have the right house or the right place to live in the right place and rent it than have somewhere boring that's a boring house that I own just for the sake of owning it because that's what people do. That's not how my mind works. So hopefully, well no, not hopefully, we will be living in the centre of London somewhere. Um, it will be big enough for the kids to come and visit um, when they want to. It will be big enough for Dave to have his own little bit of space um, and it will be big enough for us to do a little bit of creativity type stuff at home. But I want a creative space around the corner. So there'll be a studio slash writing space um, within five or ten minutes of home and there'll be room there to do all my YouTube stuff which I'll still be doing and I'll have over a million subscribers by then, well over a million subscribers. Um, but there'll be a place to do um, standing green screen stuff, there'll be a desk for me to sit and do football manager stuff if that still exists then. Um, There'll be places to sit and edit all the video stuff and archive all the video editing stuff. But there'll also be a nice little corner where it's all sectioned off in a separate little room where I can sit and write for a couple of hours a day. And I will be writing a novel. I will not be writing non-fiction stuff that I'm just in to make money. I will be writing novels. And I'll be doing sort of two or three thousand words a day, day in, day out. It'll be the first thing I do when I get to the studio every morning. I'll sit and write my words then worry about making videos for the day because I am going to be a novelist. Absolutely. It's what I wanted to be when I was a teenager. I wanted to be a novelist. I wanted to be a DJ on the radio, not mixing records stuff. Um, they're the two things I wanted. They're still the two things I want, really. This whole YouTube thing uh, didn't exist then. That would have been the third thing on the list at the time if it did. But absolutely, I want to write novels, successful novels, fiction. Um, there'll be room in this creative space for my assistant as well and interns from time to time and all that kind of thing who'll shield me from all the admin nonsense and all the money nonsense and just let me go in and create but it'll be awesome. I'll get up when I want to get up. I'll wake up naturally probably sort of seven eight o'clock in the morning. Me and Anna will head out and get some breakfast somewhere in and around London. Um, I'll then head off to the studio, do a bit of writing, perhaps plan my videos for the afternoon, head out into London again, maybe meet up with Anna for lunch, depends what she's doing, she might be at work, she might be at uni, if she's available we'll meet up, have a spot of lunch, then I'll head back to the studio, record my videos, maybe get my edits back from my book uh, editor and make a little tweak to them, edit a few videos on my own, get the vlog footage off of my f camera and get that ready to edit later on in the day and just generally toot around with video in the afternoon, then head back home, me and Anna might cook something at home, we might head out and about, who knows what we'll do, and then at some point before bed, I'll put the vlog together, because I'll still be doing this then in 10 years time. This is my favorite, I like doing the vlog, it's awesome. Um, we'll travel all over the place for work stuff as well, we'll go to all the conventions, um, we'll regularly be tootling off to New York and LA, and all these other countries as well. We'll have gone to every continent by then and just generally be living an awesome, awesome life. And it all comes back to putting the wheels in motion for doing that now. So my plan for the future involves YouTube, it involves writing, it involves 
it doesn't involve buying a house and it doesn't involve having a job and it doesn't involve having a pension. It involves doing things my own way. And that is going to be what we start moving towards over the course of the next year. This time next year, you'll see that we've made massive progress towards the 10 year goal. And I would like to think I'm looking back on this video now. Hi, future Kev. Goodness me, you're old. But might I say, looking remarkably svelte. Glad the weight loss worked out. Um, but I'm sat there watching it back in February 2027 now thinking, past Kev, you were a genius. You got everything exactly right. You hit the nail on the head. Well done, sir. And I'm glad you got the wheels in motion for that in 2017. Because if you didn't, it might not have all happened. That all got away from me a little bit there. And, and I desperately need a haircut. What is all this? Um, thank you for watching. That was very self-indulgent today. But... You know, occasionally you need a bit of self-indulgence. And thank you very much to everyone who left amazing, amazing comments on yesterday's video. Um, Anna definitely appreciated it massively. I appreciate them too. So thank you very much. Keep that up. It is nice to know that we're not as rubbish as it all as it feels like we are sometimes. So thank you for that as well. 